For a while I've been wanting a Linux computer to use for development, but I haven't been able to part with Windows due to needing it for some of the things I do. I was thinking about how I could make the switch when I realized this was the perfect chance to use some hardware from laptops where the screen hinges had broken, but the hardware inside was perfectly fine. As I would be using the hardware like a desktop computer, I needed some sort of case and figured this was a perfect use for the scraps of plexiglass and the sheet of MDF I'd had lying around for months. The hardware consists of a motherboard from a 2014 Asus Book, a 24GB SAN disk M.2 SSD, a 120GB OCC Vortex Plus SSD, and later I'll be adding a 1TB hard drive for storage. For the operating system I'll be using Ubuntu 16 installed via the minimal install ISO in expert mode. This means I can highly customize it and make sure nothing extra is installed. I'll be rolling a custom desktop environment based on KDE Plasma instead of using the default Unity environment. To start the build, I cut a piece of MDF a bit bigger than the components using my jigsaw. I then laid the components out on a piece and figured out where everything should go. I found a bag of motherboard standoffs and with some old computer supplies and I decided to use those to mount everything. First I figured out which holes in the motherboard were big enough for the standoff screws and then marked them. To add the standoffs, I drilled holes about the same size as the standoffs so I could screw them into the MDF. To make sure they stayed in place, I had super glued to the holes and tightened them down really good with pliers. Some parts of the motherboard had a bit of flex and I didn't like that. To fix I glued some scraps of MDF under different parts of the motherboard until it was pretty solid and I was happy with it. I need to add some kind of frame to the back plane I made for the motherboard, both to hold it upright and to provide structure to the case. I've had two long flat pieces of aluminum lying around for a few months. After measuring it, I found that it was the perfect length to make two rectangles to use for supports. I measured out the first piece of aluminum I needed and heated the back of the bend with a torch. I heat it because aluminum can crack and break really easily when bending it, and since it was really cold in the garage, I wanted to take no chances. After heating it, I started the bend with some pliers, and then to provide a better grip, I used a clamp to bend the rest. This was repeated eight times until I had two aluminum rectangles. I fastened the aluminum support pieces to the motherboard back plane using some nuts and bolts. I wanted to put Loctite in the bolts, but I wasn't able to find my bottle of it, so I just tightened them really hard. To figure out the size of the case, I placed the back plane and support pieces on my sheet of MDF and found the size I liked. I decided to add an angle on the top corner of the case to give it some depth. After deciding on the size of the case, I cut the side pieces along with the front and back top pieces and back supports using my jigsaw. I wanted a window in the side of the case, so I took the biggest scrap of plexiglass I had and figured out a neat shape. After tracing onto the MDF and leaving about a half inch margin for bolts, I drilled some holes and cut out my scroll saw. I did the same on the front of the case along with cutting out a slot for the front I.O. ports and a smaller cutout where I'll have a fan later on. This probably would have been easier to cut out using the jigsaw, but I wanted really fine, careful straight edges which I couldn't achieve very well with my jigsaw blade. This also would have went faster if I drilled more holes in the panel, that way I could have cut out larger pieces at once instead of cutting out dozens of really small pieces. I did the same on the front of the case, along with cutting out a slot for the front I.O. ports and a smaller cutout where I'll have a small fan later on.
Now it was time to start gluing things together. I started gluing the front panel on, but then after I had it all glued on, I realized that I hadn't drilled the mounting holes for the front window. So I had to break that front piece off, drill all those holes, and then glue it on yet again. I used lots of glue the second time around, and I used a box to help keep it straight, along with some tape so I didn't have to keep holding it up. Before I went any further, to make sure I didn't make the same mistake again, I clamped the window for the side piece onto the side piece, and then drilled all the holes out with them clamped together to make sure they were perfectly aligned. After that, I started gluing in the top piece. I used another box to help align the top piece, and then some tape to hold it up so that I didn't have to stand there while the glue dried. My cut wasn't perfectly smooth, so there was a little bit of a gap, which I filled using some wood filler. After gluing the front top on, it was time to bond the side piece with the window. I removed all the tape holding up the other pieces, made sure that it was all aligned, and then found out the top piece wasn't quite at a right angle with the base. After a bunch of flexing and nudging, I eventually got it fairly square, and then glued everything down. Put some heavy stuff on top to hold it all down to make while well, the glue dried to make sure it was a tight connection. I guess there was nothing supporting the back side of the case, so I had a little bit of flex. So I glued a couple pieces in there, and then also glued the piece in the front that would fill in the little chamfer I put on the front corner. I had some wood fill around the piece on the front chamfer, and then sanded everything down so that all the edges were as flush as I could get them with hand sanding. After that, I coat the entire case in shellac. I gave it two or three coats, I probably should have done a couple more. The idea is that the shellac kind of saturates the wood so that the paint sticks better. The reason I should have given it a couple more coats is because the first coat of paint, once it started to dry, it kind of started to soak into the MDF and then it started cracking. So I had to leave it to dry overnight, and then give it a couple more coats in the morning to cover up those cracks. I painted the entire case in a high gloss, latex based white paint. In the end the paint won pretty well with the brush, and I was pretty happy with how smooth and glossy it was when it had fully dried. After leaving the paint to dry for a couple hours, I started drilling the holes in the plexiglass panels to mount them to the front and side of the cave. Off camera, I cut another piece of plexiglass, drilled some holes through it, and painted it black. This is going to go over the fan hole until I can get some wire mesh and a fan to go there instead. Because of the way I have the motherboard oriented, the power button is on the bottom side, so I need to make a new one. To do this, I soldered a couple wires onto the pins of the original power button, testing with the multimeter to make sure it was soldering on the right ones. Later on, I added a button onto the end and then just left it hanging out of the back of the case so I could press the button whenever I wanted to turn it on. After that, I brought it over to my desk and plugged everything in just to test to make sure the button worked before I put the whole case together. And as you can see, after pressing the button, it took a few seconds to start up, and then boot into Linux. At this point, all the paint was dry, and all the windows were put in, so it was time to assemble the case. It simply consisted of unplugging everything, standing the back plane in the frame up on its end, and then sliding the case on top. I spent about a day configuring the desktop environment to my liking. I started with a KDE base, put a panel at the top, and then used the Plank dock and the Elber application launcher. In the end, this came out looking really nice, and I think it's going to serve as a great development machine for the years to come.